Hi, I'm Alexis Boundis. I'm 22, based out of Austin, Texas, and this is Financial Audit. What do you do for a living in Austin or school or what right now? Um, I'm a full-time student. I also work part-time in the ER and also Ooh. part-time as a model and content creator. Oh, really? Okay. So student and then working in the ER, so I'm guessing you're studying something in the medical field? Yes, I'm neuroscience pre-med. Pre-med? Last year? Uh, yes, my last year. Last year. So fourth year, I'm assuming? Fifth yes. year? Okay, cool. Pre-med, so we're going to be a doctor. Yes. Is the plan. Uh, it's an expensive path, yes. but also potential lucrative path. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. A long path, for sure. Yeah. A long path to also get to 100,000 subscribers, so please consider subscribing. We're trying to get there, and everyone's been awesome so far at subscribing, so thank you. And then you make content on the side? Yes. Well, okay, you said content creator and model. What is this content you've created? So I've been a professionally signed model since I was two. So I've done everything okay. from like American Girl Doll, Target, Walmart, what? Nordstrom, all, right. cool. all of those, Kohl's, Kmart. Um, and then when I went to college, I kind of took a break because mm. I wanted to make sure I was going to be able to have time and like focus on my studies. And then last year, again, I signed with another agency in Austin to get back into it. And the two years that I missed were obviously COVID years. Mm -hmm. And during COVID, everything modeling related and commercial based in the industry turned into social media content. Yeah. And like filming things in your house and UGC creation. So I started doing content creation as like, a different way to do modeling because that's like how the industry has moved like are we talking like instagram we're talking like are we talking like, like instagram and tiktok <laughs> youtube at all? oh tiktok okay. um i've gotten a couple requests to do youtube but i feel like that can get really hard and i don't know if i have time for that um, what do you mean really hard just time consuming yeah time consuming editing if you're gonna do stuff. it right if you're going to get into it to do it right it's like yeah. all encompassing time consuming absolutely so does that generate any money tiktok instagram yeah what are you bringing in um it just kind of depends on like which months i'm engaging more or like looking for jobs more so what are the jobs um so like i've done walmart walmart pays me fifteen hundred dollars a post um really yes i make Come on, Walmart. <laughs> I make 15% of all like Lululemon orders that are placed through my link because I like Lululemon. So I obviously I wanted to work with them. Is this on Instagram or TikTok? Um, it's like both. It's wherever I decide to post content type thing. Uh, I just like reach out to the brands and I'm like, hey, like I'm really interested in working with you. And then obviously like some brands are like, I will pay you like $100. So I've made anywhere from like, a hundred dollars a post to like fifteen hundred dollars a post. Mm, okay. So it just kind of depends on like which brands I'm reaching out to in which months. All right. One second. I'm going to turn off the air conditioning because it could be picked up. Usually it doesn't turn on anymore because it's been colder, but I think it's because it's hot. Mm, okay. Okay. And I know we were talking on Instagram. We'll put your Instagram on screen now, and her stuff is linked. in. okay. So. All right, 11.6 thousand followers. What do you think makes the most money, the Instagram or TikTok? I would say TikTok. Uh, Instagram can be pretty iffy. It's pretty, like, it, it okay. fluctuates a lot. Yeah, I'm scrolling through, and I wouldn't notice any of them being sponsored. Oh, well, here's, like, a facial thing. Bubbles. Gifted. A lot of my, like, Instagram stuff is mostly gifted stuff. I'll use um, my promo code, promo code. Yeah. I, a lot of Instagram is, the way they, their algorithm works is very, it differs day by day. And so TikTok is like the most consistent. Um, Shop my closet. So that's like affiliate stuff. And then you have affiliate So my leads. closet, I have a Poshmark account because I have a spending issue. And I used to originally just like donate clothes to Goodwill and Salvation Army and my boyfriend was like you shop so much you should start selling them okay and I was like that's like a lot of work and he was like you take a picture of the item and you post it online yeah and that's it and I was like okay fine like sure and so 
he was like, I don't understand like what the big deal is. Like it's not that time consuming and you're making extra money. Do you make money? Yeah. A good amount? Yeah. I think I've made. That's more just making your money back though. You're not making a profit really. Right. right? Okay. Um, I've probably made like $2,000 from it. And then I see Lululemon is just connected there. So is that yes. so your link? It's my specific link. So if you shop using that link, then I make 15% commission off of it. Ooh, not bad. Mm-hmm. Third Love, what's that? Third Love was a paid collab I did. It's a technically lingerie company, but they do like everyday lingerie. So it's not like actual lingerie. Um and then I see your TikTok, 18.6 thousand followers. So I'm yes. really confused because I have over $100,000. Where's my $1,500 brands? <laughs> what is this? Um, yeah, a lot of it is reaching out to brands and offering. You reach to, out to them. Yes. Um, Walmart reached out to me through an app called LTK, which is like to know it, which a lot of people have been using to like link their clothes. So like mm. you... A lot of fashion influencers use it, so they post their pictures, and they'll list all of the items they're wearing in that picture, and then if people buy through those, like, that platform, then you make percentage off of it. Okay. And then you do that side hustle, well, not side hustle, but side work at the emergency room. What are you bringing in doing that? Um, That's, I think it's 16 an hour. It is 16 an hour. I know that. Um, I am PRN, so it's kind of whenever I want to work mm. type thing. Um, I try to work at least two days every week. Um, well, how many hours in those shifts? 12 hour shifts. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but sometimes like if I have an exam, I won't work a week or like if I want to go on vacation, then I <laughs> will take that week off. Mm-hmm. So it just kind of depends. Mm. Okay. Now I want to get an average an okay. average of what you're bringing in on a monthly basis, what do you think? On a monthly basis? Monthly basis. I would say maybe like seven, 7,500. That's a lot for a college student. Yeah. Where, where do you think that is the majority of that is coming from? I think most of it's coming from the ER. ER. Yes, because I really like working there, so like I try to work as much as possible. Are you a contract position or are you W two'd? I think I'm W two'd. So you're getting taxes taken out yeah. beforehand. Okay, good. Then that seventy five hundred is extra good. The when you get these brand deals, thousand mm-hmm. five hundred, boom, you are saving some money on the side for taxes. Um, yes, because all of that is paid through like PayPal or Venmo. Okay. Okay. Yep, and then as long as you're putting money aside, though, yeah. like okay, twenty to thirty percent. I will say I'm, I really, I'm really proud to say I have no debt. That's my biggest claim to fame. Okay. Well, <laughs> I saw some things and. Mm, okay, so. I saw interest charges. Mm, yeah, I know that because so. This past month has been really bad. Actually, these past two months have been really bad. Um, because of the holidays. So I've been like overspending and then, well, not overspending, but so my checking account is the only account that will, I use to pay my credit cards. Yeah. Your checking account is Yeah. (laughs) And then some of them, I have like another account that has like all of my modeling money from when I was a kid Mm. that I will like put money into Mm. that account. Don't like that. I don't like supplementing. So that money I save for rent tuition and then like extra expenditures and technically i like tell myself i'm gonna put in like two thousand dollars but you're making 7500 bucks a month most of that post taxes yes what's your rent um 1500 a month okay it's not i mean you know whatever austin austin is austin are you cash flowing undergrad i don't know what that means are you paying for undergrad oh no my dad is your dad fully covered Oh, okay. That's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's certainly better than that. And that, that's really cool. That's really cool. But obviously you're going to medical school. We will talk about that in yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Because not cheap. So no debt except for when you have debt sometimes. Credit card debt, which accrues interest, which completely negates all the benefits that you're getting from it. No, but now I'm, I'm actually credit free, debt free now. Good. Like I paid it off. 
Good. Okay. Then it just happened. But yeah. in your checking account, even if we're debt free and everything, everything's going well, 71 bucks was your closing balance at the time of this. That's terrifying when automatic payments hit. And also, what is the $7,500 coming in? $2,100 came into this checking account, 2154 out. Yeah. Are you sure you have a good grasp? Do you have a good grasp on your financial situation in general? Yes. You do? Yes. I okay. just know that I spend way too much. Okay. Well, it was only 54 bucks more. Well, obviously, we want to spend less than we bring in, but I'm confused. 7500 bucks comes in. 4100 came in. Well, some of it goes into, like, it goes into different accounts. Okay, different accounts that I don't have, then. Um, I think you should have access... No, actually, there's one that you don't. I didn't send you because I don't have access to the statements. Because mm. that's my modeling one from that's when your I was modeling. two. Tell me what's in there. I have no idea what's in there. Give me an estimate. Best uh, guess. How do you not know? I if you use it to supplement, how do you not When I know? went into college, it was around seventy-five, eighty thousand. Mm. Um, then I paid for my first year of college. Which was around fifteen thousand, so probably I probably have around fifty thousand in there. What is that in? Just a checking account? Um, it's in a savings account. Do you know what kind of savings account? I have no idea. My parents set it up because I was two. And that's fair. I mean, you should take it over now. Yeah. Well, I like considered it, but then I was like, actually, I don't want to have access to that much money because. I know I have a spending problem and mm. I know I like shopping. So mm -hmm. I was like, I don't want like constant access to that. Like I don't want to be able to see it. That's a mature choice. At some point you will just need to get that discipline. Well, yeah. Like I know that. Like, so next year I'm taking a gap year and I'm going back home. Mm. So like next year and then moving forward to medical school. Cause like I'm saving that money for, for medical school as well. And so, where is home? Um, it's now in the woodlands. Okay. So I'm going back home. So you can still work at a medical institution. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. going to work in an ER in, I Perfect. think it's in spring, I think it's called. Okay. But yeah, I'm going to work the in. The Houston area. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, cool. So you think there's $50,000 in there. My main concern, if it's just in the normal savings account that Americans put their money in, it's getting like 0.01%. Yeah. I want to make sure it's getting 3 4% with where interest is right now. Yeah, I think, I know I have... 10,000 in a Charles Schwab account. You do. Okay. Yes. I would have rather, since this was saving up from two, I wish, I mean, if you were saving up since you were two and you're 25 now or 22 now, I wish that was just like in the S and P 500. Yeah. You should tell that to my dad. Yeah. I mean, it's down for this year, obviously. Uh, well, last year going into this year, but I mean, since you were two, yeah, there's definitely some lost money there for sure. My dad's an attorney. He's not good with finances. Well, I'm glad they're in control of it. It's time for you to just have control of this. Yeah. And just be disciplined with your own money. Yeah. I'm really impulsive, though. So that's my issue. That's my biggest issue. Okay. Well, we'll definitely talk about that. Yeah, you're making credit card payments in here and stuff like that. Uh, $35 overdraft fee. We're not in debt, but we're overdrafting on our checking account. Yeah, that's the only, why. That's the only time I've ever paid it. No, it's not. Like these two months are the only time I've paid it. Oh, these two months. Like, okay, so actually, I think three months. What are you? Okay, so we're talking a quarter of a year. Well, because because you've paid a total year to date seventy dollars, so you've had multiple overdraft fees. So that's the problem. Is I like spending money. Yeah. So that's why I don't want access to the other account. If you know self-diagnosed, you have a problem spending money, mm -hmm. why do you still allow yourself to continue spending money uncontrolled? If this is self-diagnosed, why are you like, okay, but I'm not going to do anything about it. I'm just going to continue doing it. I've like tried really hard to do things about it. What have you tried? I've tried a lot. I've tried like making sure that like I have to text at least like two other people <laughs> to see like make sure if I actually need it That's like stupid. if I really want something. no that doesn't make sense don't do that well, because if I really want something like I'm like oh I'll wear it for this also a big thing is for modeling I need a bunch of outfits for photo shoots and things like that so then I'll go buy things for photo shoots and I'll wear if they're photo once. shoots that you're getting paid for why are they not covering that so um, are you losing more money than you're getting paid no for these no 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 because okay. like I'm talking photo shoots that I do with like freelance photographers in Austin. 
Are you getting paid for them? No, a lot of them are just like, we decide to collab. So you're just losing money. What's the benefit of this? They're fun. Okay, so there's no real benefit to this. Except that they're fun and they're passionate. Like modeling is my creative outlet because everything else I do is academic. Mm -hmm. So I really like doing that. There's like a lot of fun things we can do that don't just completely overdraft. But I also really like shopping. So like, okay, I don't have to buy outfits for these photo shoots. I just choose to. Yeah. Again, self-diagnosed. So why have you not stopped? Because the- I mean, it's objectively bad. The numbers are showing it's bad. Yeah, I know. I just like, I don't know. I can't. So. Well, we'll talk about some methods to do that because you obviously have to. Yeah. I mean, you're going to be the classic broke doctor at this rate. So my- I was like, I'm going to come on here and I'm going to get obliterated by him. And then that'll be like me being like, oh, like I'm getting yelled at. I should light a fire under your butt. Okay. And then you're selling out way too much money quite a few times and we're drawing money from an ATM. So we don't know where that's going. What's this reoccurring payment? Magic list members, $49 a month. Magic. So you don't even know that it's 50 bucks being taken away. Almost as much money as you have in your checking account. Mem- men, uh, magic list members, Lux D, California. Recurrent payment. Oh, that's forty nine dollars. That was a influencer boot camp that you financed. Well, no, no, no. Like it's reoccurring. Like I bought an influence. No, no, no. It's not reoccurring anymore. So I there's an influencer based out of California who has this like influencer boot camp, oh, how to set geez. things up, things like that. So I did it to like see how things were. And then she was like, actually, I wouldn't recommend this one for you. I would recommend this one for you. So then like the, it's not reoccurring anymore. Cause I just bought a separate. How much thing. was this? Oh yes. Yes. Never mind. You don't have to tell me cause I saw that in your credit cards. <laughs> So why 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 are you necessarily doing this? Because you have made more money modeling and stuff since you were five than anyone that's wanted to be a model or actor on the show in their lives. Yep. So why do you need this extra help? I mean, I'm good I with don't. extra help and education. Okay, okay, you don't, but we're dropping all this money. So what? It's fun. This fun, this fun thing. It's bad. Yeah. Oh, I don't. Okay, I'm not going to like where this conversation's going, and we're making just more credit card payments again. And again, $70 of overdraft fees for last year. Not a good sign going forward. Prime account. Oh, I don't have credit card debt. Yeah, but $17.47 of interest in that last statement. And the statement previous that you sent me, you sent me two months, was over $20. So you were holding balances. Yeah. I guess you don't have debt at this very moment, and we can celebrate that. I, but it is not looking good going forward if you just got into it. Well, no, like normally I don't have it. It's just because of the holidays I was spending more money than normal because of Black Friday. And and that's when you budget. That's when you don't. Yeah. Why do you allow yourself to do that again? Because it's fun? Yeah. I mean, it's just not a good outlook. I don't want to bully you too hard, but... If that's something that just happened, it does not give me any hope for the future. I also didn't have a credit card until June. So it's like my first year with a credit card. So I was like, not going well. And I'm still very confused on this 4,000 that came in versus the 7,500. You're saying the rest is going to modeling accounts? Yeah. So approximately 2,000, 2,500 you're making a month modeling? Um, Well, I I have it split 50-50. Does any of the ER go in there um, to the modeling account? No. Okay, so the rest is modeling then. Yes. So about 4500 or sorry, 2500 is going in there? You're making that consistently on a monthly basis? Definitely not consistently, no. Okay. It just depends. So again, interest charges on here, and we're not even using all this Amazon stuff. We have Victory Medical. I don't know what that is, 60 bucks. It could be that's important. My, that's my... Um, What's it? primary care physician? Okay, that's fine. Absolutely fine. And you have your parents' health insurance, I assume, 22. Yeah. Yeah. Happy Soul Sister, Happy Soul Sister, Jonah Brown, Ink World, Sephora, Skims, so, The Ranch. And we're dropping hundreds of dollars yeah, at this Yeah, Happy prep. Soul Sisters is a uh, small business based out of Georgia. And I'm friends with them. And... Good for them. You have $47 yeah. in your checking account. Yeah. Congratulations, small business. I love small business. Good. 
Cool. Forty seven dollars in your checking account. Doesn't make sense. Well, I ha- currently I have fifty seven hundred. In your checking account. Yes. Good. So you've recovered. Yes. By the end of the month, is that going to be drained back down though? No. Why do you say that when it already was at the end of last month? Well, because I made a deal with a couple of my friends that we're not allowed to spend over $1,000 a month. Okay. It might be an interesting way to look at, but we'll talk about better ways in the end. I'm and then a lots really of Amazon purchases. Purchase. Yeah, because I, I, I buy all my groceries on Amazon. Oh, like Amazon Fresh? Amazon Fresh okay. and everything like that. Then you have a city card. There was no interest on here, but... 2,979 previous balance, new purchases of 1,621. It's a lot of money for a college student. Yeah. You say you're bringing money in, but it's not as consistent on the other, on the modeling side. So I don't know. But we have the Happy Soul System. We're back to that. We're back to Sephora. And uh, more Victory Medical. We're putting them on both cards and we're dr- having Uber trips and something else I'm about to bring up. Happy Soul Sister, Lulu and Lulu. They're supposed to be paying you money through the thing, but you're just dropping hundreds of Christmas dollars Christmas presents. There. Okay. And then blue check. What is that? I'm assuming that's some BS influencer thing. 148 I don't know what that is. Okay. Blue check. You dropped $148 there. I don't know what that is. Dude, for someone with the money you don't have, I would want to know where $148 is going. Yeah. And then $399 to Influencer Accelerator in Santa Monica, California. That's the new one, huh? Yep. That's the one that was a subscription, and then I switched over to the other one. So what is this other one? And how much does it cost? It's the $400, like the $399.99. And it's like an eight-week program on like, and it sends like brand emails and like things like that. But you don't need this, right? No, I just do it for fun. I wouldn't. Just don't. Refund it. Get a refund. Stop. The main reason is because we have stupid expensive medical school coming up. Yeah. And the way you spend and manage your money, you are going to be the classic broke doctor. Well, like I was planning on fixing it. Just like. That's not how that works. Yeah, I know. You don't just future plan to. I plan to maybe sometime do this. No, you have to, you have to do it. Yeah. What kind of doctor are you going to be? Uh, orthopedic surgeon. Well, it started as pediatric neurosurgeon, and now it's changed to orthopedic surgeon. Okay, so you're going to be making a lot of money. Yeah. What's the average? I have no idea. I've never looked into that. Say it again. Orthopedic surgeon? Yeah. Uh, you're probably going to be making like three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 a year. Oh, well, orthopedic salary range is from, well, I guess it, dep- it depends on the website. Maybe even 500 I think it just depends on, like, where you are. Like, which hospital. It's going to be good money. You could be making up to, like, a half a million dollars a year, if not even more. Which is good. But this medical school debt that you're going to be taking on here very soon, I assume, right? Um, no. I will, like, I won't be going to medical school debt. I won't have medical Why? school debt. Um, my dad and I made a deal that if I paid for my first year of college because I was out of state student because I'm from Chicago originally. So I paid for my first year of UT and then I got in state tuition and my dad's paid for the rest of it. And so now the rest of my modeling account is going to go into my medical. Okay, well that's fifty thousand dollars. But he's also taking the rest of it. What does he do? That's a lot of money. That's he's an attorney. A few hundred thousand. So he he's a he has successful. His own, he is on the law firm. Yeah. So a very successful yeah. attorney. Okay, that's incredible. So that is a very different situation than I thought we were going to walk into. No, no, no. I like we had made this deal like a long time ago. He was like, "I'll pay for one or the other," and I was like, "How about this?" Hmm. Because I knew that like UT out of state is a lot more expensive than in state. Okay, very cool. And then how are you going to be sustaining yourself throughout medical school? Um, That's where I wish that $50,000 was going. Um, is hopefully, well, I have my boyfriend and he's a chemical engineer. Can't rely on that. Um, Not married. I know that. Um, also modeling. Um, You're going to have time in medical school? Mm-hmm. Okay. There's a lot of people that do it. Like, a lot of people, like, ev- that's what everyone says when I tell them, I'm going to do modeling and I'm going to do medical school. And they're like, you sure you're going to have time for that? And I'm like, yeah, I know a lot of people who do it. And 
everyone said the same thing. As long as you tell your agent what you have going on, like you just talk to your agent. I mean, if you're working your butt off, you can do anything. Right. And like, I have no problem working. I like working. Good. So I don't have an issue with that. Um, that, and then also you're usually working in the hospital. Right. Right. Well, and then residency, but I mean, residency doesn't pay great. Right. Yeah. Okay. So graduating this year, then a leap year, and then it's going to be, uh, what is it, uh, it's like five, six years? Four years medical school, and then another four years of residency. Oh, so eight years. Okay, wow. Well, yeah. And then you'll be making that good monies. The way you live your life is in a way where you could be bringing in $400,000 a year right after you graduate, yep. and $400,000 a year will be gone. Yeah. That's scary. That's not good. No. So are you ready to correct the root cause when it comes to all that? Because that's the that's the glaring red flag in this conversation. Right. That's why I was like, yeah, I just need someone to like yell at me mm-hmm. to be like, you need to stop this. Well, that'll work for maybe a month, but then it just comes down to discipline. Yeah. The way that I think works for you to train the muscle of budgeting, this doesn't, I don't think this works as well for our generation because for us it's our money is what it says on our accounts on the apps on our phones and stuff like that so cash does not work for me that being said i think something you might consider is the envelope system which was invented and they talked about in the early 1900s i think like my biggest thing is i need to like handwrite things because i've tried like the finance budgeter like on excel sheets exactly well that's why i think the cash is gonna work for you the envelope system so my only problem with that is like you know the envelope system yeah where you like save certain things for but like i don't get cash okay well i that's why i think it's something worth experimenting with because again you have access to all when when i when i spend a dollar I don't feel it. But if I see something tick down on my account balance, like on my phone, then I'm like, Ugh, terrified. But if we get you to a situation where obviously leave some buffer in your checking account, right. have rent automatically taken there, but the money that we do for rent that, or I'm sorry, the money that we are using for food, for any clothing, any gas, any going out, anything like that, because you don't have a crazy amount of debt, so we don't have to freak out and, like, pay off a bunch of stuff, because we just need to make sure you're not going into debt. Right, right, right. You take that allocated amount of money that fits within a budget that you create, put those into envelopes, and you write on there, groceries. All the grocery money that you spend comes from that envelope that month. But like if I all of a sudden Amazon that's gone, Fresh, so like, how am I supposed to pay cash for gro- groceries? What do you mean? I do Amazon Fresh for my all my groceries. Well, to better budget yourself, we're gonna go to a grocery store. I don't have a car. Oh, you don't have a car. I Uber. Where do you live? West Campus. Okay, well, you can walk to a grocery store. Target's right there. That Target marks up their prices because it's on campus. Dude, you gotta figure out a better way to budget. We can't just be making excuses. I know in that area well, you can walk or even take a bus to a grocery store. Yeah. I've gone with my friend a couple times. Mm-hmm. We can find a million reasons not to do something, but, but this is a potential cheaper solution. To get groceries on Amazon Fresh than it is at EGB. I just am concerned that you continue to use Amazon Fresh. You're just clicking the button. You're just clicking the button. You're just clicking the button. We're not budgeting. You've even said just a couple minutes ago, you've done the whole Excel street thing. You've done the whole budgeting app yeah. thing and it doesn't work for you. So this is a solution. You can find a million reasons not to. This is something worth trying. That's fair. So you only spend in those categories what is written on there. And if all of a sudden you look in there and there's only a dollar left, you only have a dollar left for that category. You do not cross envelopes. You don't pull from your checking account. That is how to at least build that bone or that muscle. Once you have it after hopefully just a couple or a few months, then sure, we can trans- transition to having the budget be in a budgeting mobile app of your choice or an Excel spreadsheet, and you only spend what's in that category. What I fear for you is that just that does not exist. Yeah, that mindset does not exist, and it's been proven here. You've self-admitted that. No, it's, it's, it's tried. It's... 
I like tried it and it just doesn't work. That's why the envelope system I think works for you specifically because it'll help build that muscle memory in your brain. That's fair. I just like, I don't know. I like don't have cash for anything. Like I don't receive You'll cash. You'll be taking from the ATM. Mm-hmm. You'll be going to the bank, taking out monies. But like that, see, like my problem with going to the ATM is like I'm Wells Fargo. There's no Wells Fargo ATM, so then I have to pay like a three percent like withdrawal fee. There's not a Wells Fargo even ATM on campus. They closed it down. Maybe we switch banks. That's no one likes Wells Fargo anyway. But that's like a lot of work. No, that's not. It's incredibly easy. What are you talking about? You know how easy it is to open a bank account? Yeah, but then you have to like switch everything over. And oh, we're finding a billion <laughs> reasons not to again. What do you want to do? Do you want to be in a place where when you're making $400,000 a year, all of it's gone? No. Because that's what it's going to be like unless you create some discipline. Well, like I don't think I would be that bad. What do I- you mean? There's no example of you not being that bad. I think, like, for me, like, my mindset is... This Broken. Is, well, this is the first year that I've, like, actually, like, made money myself. Like, that I can see money coming in. And it's all gone. Yeah, so I think I just need to learn, like, where to draw the line because... And I'm, how do you learn that? Maybe through something called an envelope system. Yeah. But, like, ha- like tangible cash, like, I don't, I don't think that would do it for me. Well, at least try it. If it doesn't, then you can find something else that works. But what you've already self-admitted is you've tried the budgeting apps, you've tried Excel sheet, so we go to the next best thing. Well, so I got this, like, financial planner that, like, I have to handwrite things because, like, I think that's my issue is, like, I need to, like, physically see it. Because, like, if I'm just typing it, then it's just, like, a number on a computer. So I think I have to, like... So what are you doing on this planner? Are you just writing down what you're spending or and tracking it that way? Or are you setting what you're allowed to spend on specific categories? Both. Okay, and then it's clearly not working because we have the example now. I just started it. Like, I just got the planner yesterday. Okay. Oh, okay. That's, like, where, like, the $1,000 is coming in with, like, me and my friends is, like, we have $1,000 a month Do you have it with you? Um, I don't. That's okay. Then tell me your categories. Tell me your categories and the the amount you're allowed to spend on those categories. We have food. Which is groceries? Yeah. Or going out to eat? Both. Nope. Well, so my... Those are separate. Nope. How are they separate? What do you mean? You need to... Because groceries and going out to eat are separate. Going out to eat is such more expensive that you could completely throw the category on just a meal. I have like a meal plan. What's your meal plan? Factor. Okay. Should well, I that's not going out to eat, though. Right. I put that. But I'm saying if you're going to, like, if you go to a random restaurant and drop, like, 100 bucks, we do not include that in the same category as But I don't really groceries. do that. Like, I don't go out to eat. Like, if I do, it's to a coffee restaurant. Still, they are coffee. separate categories. Okay. How much is in this food category? Um, 450 Okay. That's not crazy. Okay. $450. Continue. I have $50 for Uber. All right. Um, I have 250 for like medical miscellaneous. And then 250 for like clothing and like wants. 250 on medical? Is that common on a monthly basis? No. I just like have it just in case. It's like not only medical, it's like miscellaneous. Like if I need, like if I went to a doctor because like I got sick and like I needed to go get a prescription or something like that. How common is that? Well, like, I usually spend about $60 prescription a month, so... Then I would just do that. Is well, because also, doing like, here? January, like, I haven't gone to the doctor in a really long time. So, like, I just, like, scheduled all of my appointments. Mm. So, like, that 250 is, like, that as well. Okay. On a monthly basis, for our monthly budget, we put what's ongoing for our base budget, what's ongoing... Now, when we're coming up to the next month, if we know there's going to be a doctor appointment, we put that into the budget and we see okay. what has to be moved around in order to incorporate that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I don't think it's 250 every month. No. We say whatever it was for subscriptions or prescriptions. And then if we know a doctor appointment is coming up, which right. if this month it is, then you just, you I know. I have like four doctor's appointments. This okay, month. perfect. And so the 250 makes sense. Rent again, 1,500. Mm-hmm. Okay. Any other categories? No. So that's $2,500 a month. Mm-hmm. If you can stick to it, that's great. That's the goal. Because it's like half your money. Right. I'm okay with you spending $250 on wants 
in this in this case. I mean, that's that's okay. Do you now the question becomes when there's an outfit that you want? I mean, you were dropping hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars in the one month that we looked. What happens? Two hundred fifty dollars, and you see a three hundred dollar dress that you want. What happens? Well, so like if I don't spend it one month, then like it rolls over to the next month. So like if I don't spend the two fifty, okay, like that okay, month, then well, like the next month I'll have like five. sure you can you can make that work. But what I'm saying is, in the month you have two hundred fifty dollars. There's a three hundred dollar dress. What do you do? Oh, well, I wouldn't buy a three hundred dollar dress. Three hundred dollar, whatever, it doesn't matter. Three hundred dollar want. What um, do you do? Then I would buy it and just, just give myself a two hundred dollar the no. next month. No, absolutely not. No, you don't loan yourself money from the next month. That doesn't make sense. I guess you can save up and get it the next month, or you can. Cut 50 from your food if you really want to. You can move things around in a budget. I don't know if that's going to be productive for you. That's usually for more disciplined people because it starts giving you excuses to do things. That's fair, yeah. But no, you absolutely do not just, okay, now I just have 200 next month. That becomes so dangerous. Yeah. That is so dangerous, especially in your situation of spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars. No, in this budget that you're creating, if something is over 250 or multiple items equal over 250, you don't do it that month. Okay. You set some of it for next month. I'm okay with $250 on wants in a monthly basis. Just don't go above that. If that's what you, if this, if these are the categories that you set and you just disregard them in the, right. what they're there for, then there's no point. The budget's right. broken. Yeah, Which is the problem with, with when I did like the Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. So try this. Let's see if it works. You know, we'll see in a few months. And then, again, my concern is once you start making a lot more money in quite a few years, in almost like a decade, you're going to just lifestyle inflate yourself like crazy. You're just going to be spending, you're just spending is going to increase to where that money is. I think also problem, like my problem is I get bored a lot. And when I go bored, I go online shopping. Mm -hmm. So like when I am a doctor and I'm in medical school, I won't be as bored as much because I'll be so busy. Cause like, I hope so. What I've noticed is like my spending gets really bad when I'm bored. Yeah. We definitely need to find different outlets. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something you're just going to have to work on yeah. with yourself. Finding different outlets because yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think you're going to lifestyle inflate yourself. You said you have $10,000 in a something account. What's that in? What is that invested in? Where's that money from? Um, It's Charles Schwab. It was from my... My dad was putting it in there when I was, like, from my modeling account. Do you know what's invested in? No idea. Okay. He gave it to a financial advisor and said, here you go. So this money that you're saving up over the next year that you're taking a gap year, is that money paying for colleges or, or grad school, or, sorry, for medical school, or is it just, are you saving it up so you can use it throughout medical school to It'll sustain yourself? It will be, like, for rent and for things like okay, that. Okay, cool. I would try to put your best projections for it. Do you, are you accepted into a medical school? Uh, no, because I'm doing a gap year, so I haven't even applied yet. Right. Okay, because we'll want to know the area and everything, and then you'll want to make projections, because I would like to start getting your investing muscle building right. as well. If we can start putting money, I would get that Charles Schwab. It's probably in your name. I mean, I don't know. Try to get control of that. Meet with a financial advisor who will help you get into good investing accounts, probably something like a uh, index target retirement fund, something like a 2060 retirement fund, 2070. Essentially, it starts more aggressive. It's it's controlled like through Fidelity or Schwab or something like that. It starts more aggressive and it levels out to more conservative as you get closer to retirement. And then all that you have to think about is just putting in the money. Okay. But you'll sit down with the financial advisor and figure that out. I want you to start that as well. I have my... Um, I don't know what it's called. Like your retirement fund? Like your four... Oh, one k. 401k, yeah. Through the hospital? Yeah. How much is in there? What are you doing? No idea. I do like 15% of my paycheck. 15%? Wow. It was like the highest. Did you ever select a fund to go into? Because if not, it's just losing money sitting in cash. Well, it's like going into the 401k account. Yeah, but what fund within the 401k is it being invested into? If you haven't selected anything, it's probably just sitting into like... No, it's like going into something. It was like their automatic like thing. I just like clicked on. Sometimes that can be something that's like almost just follows cash. I mean, I don't know. I just like did that. That's what my dad told me to do. So I just did that. <laughs> okay. 
Well, what's very clear is that is something it is time to correct. You're going to get control of the swab. You're going to meet with the financial advisor. It's worth it. This 401k, you're going to figure it out. You're not going to be there for very long, so you'll want to roll it over to somewhere else. You, right. Um, you'll want to figure out what that's in as well, because if this is not making money, it's just losing money from inflation. Yeah. This is pointless at that point. I'm glad it's just putting money aside. I mean, that's good instead of just spending it all. But I think steps from here for you. We test this writing your budget out and following it for a few months, make sure it's working, and then adapt as you need to do. Find better outlets for your being bored, spending money. Once you start applying to medical school, see what the projected next, you know, four years during the school when you're not making money in residency, what right. is the rent, what is food going to be like, what do I need to have stockpiled, and then see if you're able to save anything on the side. And then other than that, we're taking control of SWA, we're taking control of the $50,000 in your, what it, well, it's like a modeling account, and then also understanding your 401k, making sure these are getting put in places that are actually making money. In the $50,000 that... Uh, since it's going to be put towards school, we'd probably just put it in a high yield saving account where it's at least getting three, four percent, and not point zero one percent. Oh, it's like the difference between the high yield and regular. Four percent versus point zero one percent. How do you like? Do you just like go to the bank and say I want to put it in a high yield? No, you'll just search up high yield savings and open something through like Marcus or Ally or a lot of different options. There's like a million different options now. Okay. Yeah, and you'll just do that online and you'll just transfer it over, just like you transfer anything else. Then. My big fear is just the budgeting. You just gotta, you gotta figure. No one's gonna baby you. Yeah, I know. you have to figure that out and decide if you want to be an adult or not. So far, not. Yeah. Any final thoughts? No, I don't think so. For Alexis, her overall financial situation is not bad at all. Of course, that comes from an extreme place of privilege where her dad is taking care of everything, but that's not a bad thing at all, of course. He has the finances to do so, and if that's what he wants to do, that's great. In there, her spending habits, it may have enabled some of her behavior of not really understanding the value of a dollar just because she spends more than she makes. However, I hope and think this budgeting system might be the first one to work for her if she's more of a visual person and writing everything down. So we wish her the best of luck and we'll follow through in a few months and see if the budgeting has worked and her spending habits have gotten under control. But for now, because there's not a lot of debts, not a lot of bad things, Hammer Financial Score, 6 out of 10. Check out all the fun things in the description, including her socials and my Instagram and Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.